Skip the time skipper starts level three and skips their first round. It's pretty damn good. First thing I want to do with Skip is just thump a lot of minions on the board. Try and get some value that way. I'm going to lock here because Brave Princess is a pretty early hit as Skip. Pretty good early hit, that is, as Skip. Um, it has a bit of an easier time getting its uh, thing off while all of the enemy minions are still weenies and there's only one minion on board. So ideally next turn I buy two twos to pad the board space out a little bit. This round, we just take our elbow. Mm -hmm. Up against Wonder Waddle, Roy G. Biv. No one else I recognize here. Can one Romeo summon two Juliet? It can through Reduplicator. Reduplicator is a four cost treasure that says when you summon the first character Jurina Brawl, summon an additional copy of it. Yeah, Trophy Hunter, Muerte. Sure. Other options. Sal says I immediately died to skip as well. That board is unstoppable. Yeah. It, with with they've got like built-in redundancy in, in two Yormangans, and both of Yormangans are gilded as well. So like you can try and put Medusas on board. You can try and polymorph them. You can try and put... Uh... Oh, wow. Interesting. Um, you can try and put some of those stuff out. Not necessarily going to do it for you, though. Wow. Uh, Prince Arthur? Uh, start of each brawl. Give your upgraded prince and princesses plus two, plus two permanently. This is going to upgrade relatively soon if it works. I'm going to take that and roll. If I could guarantee I could get both of those next turn, I would do it. Maybe? No, 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 because four is available next turn, so I don't lock for lucky. <sighs> Let me get two slays here. This attacks, it slays something. They have something attack, kill my Prince Arthur. This attacks and slays another thing. Well, we got the first slay, and that's enough for me, baby. That's all I needed. I'm fine with that. I'm gonna take Lucky and then Sugar and Spice here. Take a roll. Hungry Hungry Hippocampus early is also really good. Shame that locking is really bad on that board, though. No Mad Mim to help slay. Didn't have the ability to buy it last round. And I didn't want to lock when I was about to go into 4 gold. 4 gold. Level 4, rather. I hear you like dwarves. It... Lucky may as well not be a dwarf. Lucky can totally be taken in non-dwarf builds. Lucky good. Mage Princess is okay with Arthur. It is four turns on natural spell every single turn, which I'm unlikely to do because I'm already behind curve. So it's four spells until it's relevant. And then it has to grow after that point. It's not really that good. When a character in your front row dies, you give the characters behind it plus one, plus one this brawl. Or a treasure map. I can't take another investment play. I'm heavily invested already as this character. Like, this is an investment play. This was an investment play. This is an investment play. Playing this character is an investment play. It's all investment. I need some execution. I'll do. I'll do for the moment. <sighs> so I gotta buy, what, Animal Resummon on Curve? 
copycat first. Oh yeah, because I only have one evil in the back line. Yep, sorry, one uh, one last breath. So copycat, after I attack, trigger the last breath of uh, abilities of characters behind me. He's going to trigger the Lucky's cost reduction here. Hey, cost reduced. Oh no. We got the cost reduce again. There we go. Good tie right there. Unfortunately, they got a. Well, I mean, is unfortunate. No, it is unfortunate because they had two uh, Romeos on that board, didn't they? Oof. I mean, look, if it's free, I'll take a Cinderella. I'll also take the prize pig because, you know, I can sell it for the same cost. And if nothing else, it's just a buff to the Hungry Hungry Hippocampus. I worry if I roll right now, I'm unlikely to find anything before I stop rolling for the turn. I'm just going to take the Blessing of Athena here, give all of our characters plus one, plus one permanently. Because I'm pretty sure that I wouldn't do anything except for roll for the rest of the turn. Now that you've got another Last Breath character, you might want to rejigger your copycat. Yeah, you're right, I can make sure that I give my opponent one gold. Woo! I'm just paying them off to, like, if I give you one gold, Grandmother, will you eliminate Fallen Angel from the game for me and then, then we're square? <sighs> nice thing about buying the princesses in the leather shop in the shop again. It's true. Didn't have to worry about ever again. <sighs> that was a good kill. Man, I thought we were behind. I felt behind. It's not behind though. Cheesy, crazy, lemon squeezy. That's a uh, hungry, hungry as well as a wombats. I think we're gonna try and do the hungry, hungry late game. Hard to cast a spell this round, unfortunately. <laughs> Hilarious. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think it's way too late for us to go into Prince Arthur, but Golden Chicken and Black Cat really matter. Okay. Actually, I think I sell Prince Arthur and Lucky. I buy the Golden Chicken, giving plus two health, plus two health permanently to each of these. Then I sell the Golden Chicken, then I buy the Black Cat. It's actually that important. And then we rejigger the field so that the copycat is actually doing a resummon of both, uh, or figures the, the wombat and then resummons for the black cat as well. Okay. Not awful. There's not that many treasures on two that really affect this build at all, unfortunately. Target it again. Hilarious. <laughs> of course. Of course that... Of course. No, you've got both of them down before I ever get any of my resummons off. Oh, that's so mean. The resummons permanently buffed them, though. Oh, they're all ranged minions. Whatever, we got them in the end. against the lowest person in the lobby. I'm actually going to take the experience. Uh, plus two attack to all of my characters each round. I also think it's probably time to get the copycat off the board. I 
I pretty desperately just want as many resummons to hit these hungry, hungry hippocampus in the back line as possible. Quite desperately. Deeply desperately. This is good. Good board. Pop board. Love it. Selfie kitty and plus two HP on those minions. Something both of these in order to get the kitty cup pass. Yeah, it's totally relevant because it's plus two HP for both of these permanently. Up again on the far left, triggering the wombat on the uh, in the back would be pretty okay. Well, it it displaces the units that I want in the back lane, which is the hungry, hungry hippocampus as well as the rice pig. I still want them in the back line at the moment because right now I can afford them time to grow. Also, that would have just killed the copycat hilarious. Well, if I had it in that position instead of the first. Come on, Needle Nose. Ooh, managing to get only one big pig out of that is pretty good for us. Very good trades here on our board. We're going to get it. Ooh. Nice. Don't eliminate them, but I do get my extra experience. Taking me all the way to level 6 plus 1 goal. Ooh, hungry, hungry hippocampus. Summon an exact copy of the first character you summon each brawl. Let's get a baby bear. I think I might even just give Merlin's test to the Hungry Hungry Hippocampus here. No, I'm selling these two for a five. Uh, I care about a couple of fives right now. That's fine. In its, is that fine in its current position? Maybe that's better. Um... Yeah, I care about some five cost treasures right now. In particular, I really deeply care about getting um, Monkey's Paw. I would happily take another minion off the board and just get plus six, plus six to all my characters. Uh, Summoning Portal, I would happily take. Uh, I would also happily take Mimic. Mimic would replace the Needle Nose Daggers in this position, making Ring of Revenge and the Reduplicator better. The Reduplicator is not always going to pull itself off, but uh, it will be pretty good in the situations where it does. You need a space on board with the first slot resummon? Nope, I do not. Reduplicator only triggers when you have the ability for it to trigger. Watch. Minion dies. Resummon happens. Minion dies. Next minion dies. Resummon occurs. Duplicates. So I don't really have like a, a backseating kind of like rule in this channel. Um... The closest I have to one is, if you are going to correct me, please be certain that you're right. Uh, and that might seem initially a little cruel, but understand from my perspective that uh, the communication on my side is one to Manny. It is... There are a lot... I, I, am, I am the minority of the voices in this room with the, majo uh, the majority of the speaking power. You get the health of my healthiest character. Jeez, do I take those? Screw it, I wanna try. Hmm. That's pretty good if I care about that. Raps and chat is one to many relationship. Chat to chat is a many to many relationship. Raps teak is one to one relationship. So basically, Twitch is just an SQL database. Uh, I, I, I actually think talking about one to one and one to many in, in terms of the relationships here is deeply important. It's deeply important because, you know, like I, it, obviously, you know, an interaction where a chat member suggests a line of play that isn't actually feasibly supported in the game that doesn't actually exist is just on some level mechanically incorrect um for them that interaction is very small for me that comprises a large amount of interactions i have if i don't make a rule that's like please be certain if you're gonna correct me
Why did that resummon the dupe evil cat instead? Weird. Yeah. We've finally, like, I've actually seen the shoulder fairies do something. I've never seen, I've never seen anyone take this. It gives you the uh, attack of your strongest evil character on board and the health of your strongest uh, good character. So, you know, it's going to scale with Hunger Hunger Gap, yeah, it's ridiculously. I do want to take it, do breath, and give it attack. I'm actually just going to give it the attack. I think it's important. South says I've used it very effectively on Treance. That does make sense. Yeah, Treance seems like a build in which it could possibly fit. I like the idea behind the Shoulder Fairies and the idea behind... Where is she? Fallen Angel as well. Um... I don't know if it's just because, you know, people haven't been incentivized to run, you know, good slash evil builds consistently beforehand, but it's it doesn't feel good to me, but maybe that's because I don't know yet. Shoulder Fairies is, is level six, just in case you're wondering. Gets its stats at the start of the fight. Hey, it'll be a good pair with Echo Wood. Echo Wood immediately just gets all the stats from it, though. So I didn't, uh, should have thought about that. You're kidding me. I could have gotten bossy there. That's so rude. It's fine. You redirecting my attack doesn't matter. Man, this hungry, hungry Bacamba is getting strong. Do shoulder fairies get double bonus? Do gold shoulder fairies get double bonus from good evil? Yes. Nice. All right, what do you got? Tree of life matters a lot. These get very healthy. Roll. There's the monkey spawn. Said I was going to take that, didn't I? We'll take that over the Ring of Revenge, and then I remove this from the field. So now my reduplicator is guaranteed to duplicate the baby bear. I feel pretty good about this. I do like the idea of maybe getting the baby bear back out there though, instead of the wombats in disguise. Backline destroyed. And then I resummon two bears. And they resummon more bears. And then as each of these bears dies, the shoulder fairies are rehealed full with the tree of life. And one of your characters dies, fully heal your other characters. If this game goes, like, when do we lose, right? Good question. When do we lose? Uh, when the, oh, I'm Skip. I was literally about to ask, like, when Skip just hits big minions. But I'm Skip and I have the big minions. I forgot about that. Don't care about those. Also, but I will take the free roll. No. 
Nope. Crumbs. I do want that. <laughs> do I? Yeah, I do. Oh well, we'll wait. This is so powerful, your biggest threat is yourself. Yeah. That was actually part of the um the the theology. Uh the creation story of of my uh my universe in DD. There were 13 aspects of creation. The aspect of the architect, the aspect of the biologist, the aspect of the devil, the aspect of the angel, you know, all of the things that you might expect, right? The aspect of the merchant, things like that. Um, and they all, oh, nice kill. Beautiful. Uh, and they created the world and then realized, as gods often do, that the biggest threat to their, exist uh, their creation was themselves. And uh, they shattered themselves into a million pieces. Well, a million pieces, infinite pieces across all of the different realities they created. Jasonman says, aspect of Frank. Kind of funnily enough, the aspect of the merchant was actually also kind of the aspect of James, because in every single town that the NPCs went to, there was going to be a merchant named James. And every single time the merchant was going to pretend, well, not pretend, but the merchant was going to be exactly the same merchant, but would have no memory of the characters. And that's because all of the universes had an aspect of each of the gods in them that had been born and grown over time. And the merchant had always just become the same thing in every universe. One of my favorite things about uh, fantasy media is that involve alternative universes and stuff like that. Let's take a second here. I really want some spell, like attack buffs. For you. <sighs> Not happening. Um, one of the things that I like the most in that kind of media in particular is when uh, someone is split across, you know, however many realities they're split across, but no matter what happens, it's all tending back to the same thing. I just love that trope that like, it, it is effectively fatalism, right? It's just like, this was always meant to occur, but no matter the universe, it still occurs. And I'm thinking about that at the moment, a little, uh, you know, uh, on theme, as we're listening to the Transistor soundtrack, right? And a song in the Transistor tra soundtrack, uh, Paper Boats, perfectly encapsulates that feeling. Let me actually put Paper Boats on. I love this song. It's really annoying. I really care about my triples right now. So, like, we're going to hard roll, and most of these turns we'll find nothing, unfortunately. Oh, uh, do I replace Doom Breath? I think I do replace Doom Breath there, right? So many animals. Oh, I would take that to... roll this is fine i'm fighting a ghost so i don't expect to die big on the back row uh, i get extra stats from my monkey's ball i still do need those Is this a D&D game you run? An original Rhapsody campaign setting? Yep. I mean, it's off camera. It's just for a couple friends. Well, for my partner and one friend. Mmm, 
I could become a new hero right now. Ah! Merlin. Not, sorry, not Merlin. Uh, grandmother. Start with 50 health. When you reach level six, become the big bad wolf. Your characters are plus three, plus three. So all of our characters just get plus three, plus three. And we get 10 health. Thanks. Boydy, how's he? Whoa. Um, get, get, sup. Oh! And we did it. Round table at the start of your brawl, your characters attack and health both become the highest of the two. I mean, I should probably stop the the soundtrack playing in the background. It's not in the content ID system, but it seems a little out of spirit to just leave it running in something that's almost certainly gonna go to YouTube. Look at this GD screen. You are kidding me. <laughs> okay. Okay. My Talos, this... They thought they were going to lose. <laughs> yeah. That's why you never concede. You never concede until the cards are down, everything is resolved, and you've definitely lost the game. I'll take that win. We take those. That is more than a good enough win for me. 248. Love it.